Yo, 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 what's up? I want to welcome you to Sound Off. This is your boy K Paper Chase, and we got a real, real good show for you today. Okay. So I want to talk about quantum jumping. I mean, you probably heard this before. Some people say taking a quantum leap. Um, I've even heard trans surfing. It's just a term to describe how we can kind of break free from this reality and kind of jump to a better place. All right. So, yeah, hopefully you all watched my video. I did a video talking about Schrodinger's cat. And I'm also going to talk about that today just for a little, um, you know, just a little brief. And I also I want to talk about the double slit experiment because I got to get through this educational part. And what this is going to do, this is going to help us understand the concept of how to quantum jump and how it's, it's broken down. All right. So, yeah. So, yeah, some real, real interesting stuff. All right, so first of all, when it comes down to it, when you're talking about quantum particles, those are very small particles, which are atoms, all right? And atoms are what we're made of. So in order to understand it, you need to look at it as a micro versus macro level, okay? So even in one atom, which is very, very small, that is enough information to reproduce everything that the atom came from. So if you know about fractals and stuff like that, you probably understand all right. And the thing about it, um, first, we'll talk about this cat thing, right? Because Schrodinger's cat, I mean, it was an experiment. And um, what they wanted to do was see how particles and atoms react on a microscopic level. Because if we can see how that works, it should work the same on our level. So by studying these little particles, they came up with, um, with a concept. All right. So it's a thought experiment. And the cat experiment is the cat is locked in the box, but there's a sheet over the box, so you can't see the cat. There's um, some kind of little nuclear vial or something like that that has a 50% chance of breaking. It might break, it might not. It's just probability. If it breaks, the cat will die once he is, he's exposed to the chemicals. If it doesn't break, the cat will live. So they press the button. But the concept is that because the cat is covered up and we're not able to observe the cat, the cat can actually be like in a dual state. Or you can say that we don't know what state it is until that wave function breaks down. And once it does that and we remove the sheet, we can make an observation. All right, so the thought is the cat can be both alive and dead at the same time. But the atoms actually have a consciousness, these subatomic particles. So that consciousness, what that does, is almost like they're watching us. So they know when we're looking. And once you make an observation, that's when they commit to a certain place. So it's like they're everywhere at once. But once we look at it, it commits to a certain place. Sort of like if you're playing a video game, right, where it's kind of being created as you go. Once you go around that corner, until you went around the corner, it wasn't created because it didn't need to be there because there was no observer. So it's sort of like if a tree falls in the woods, um, if there's anywhere to anybody to hear it, will it make a noise? Probably not. I mean, there's nobody to hear it. Okay, so yeah, some real um, um, cool stuff. And um, this is basically a diagram of the Schrodinger's cat experiment, you know. And that just comes to show how when things collapse as far as wave functions, when they're being exerted, then they um, commit to a certain place. But it's like they're more than one place at the same time until you actually look at them. All right, I'm just going to go over the double slit experiment real quick. Um, this experiment, what they did is they um, put an electron beam gun and they put two slits and a piece of paper, piece of cardboard, and then they sh shine the electrons through the two slits. Now, what happened is instead of making two slits, it made all of these slits. So what happened is they actually uh, were everywhere at once. But once again, they weren't everywhere at once. When we made the observation, that's when they act, you know, actually committed. And the interference pattern still shows that they were everywhere at once before we made that observation
All right. So, you know, what it suggests is that, you know, particles, they can be at two places at the same time and they can act as particles and waves. So depending on what they need to do or their function, they can switch back and forth. And since we are made of these particles and since the particle is everything that's contained in the whole, we are the same way. So they can be multiple places at the same time. And that's what these experiments prove. Okay. All right. So let's get into the good stuff. We got over the educational part. So um, the whole quant concept of quantum jumping is that we have parallel universes or par parallel realities. So what happens is every time you make a decision, the universe splits off. The decision that you make is the world that you go to. And the decision that you didn't make is, you know, still going on too. Because you got to uh, remember, if this is an infinite universe, then every single possibility, every impossibility, everything has to exist somewhere. So what I want you to do is I want you to think of it as in uh, dimensions or vibrations instead of space. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not going anywhere but everything is right here, but it's sort of rolled up into different dimensions. And we're not actually going a far distance. We're raising our vibration to that dimension so that we can switch over, okay? So yes, if the universe is infinite, it has to be a plane, and there has to be every probable outcome that's playing out. And it's playing out all right here, right now, at the same time. You don't have to go anywhere. Our reality is everything uh, that's around us. Okay. So what I want you to think about is this is not how a parallel universe looks. So it's not going to be sort of like the mini worlds theory. It could, but not this concept as far as us floating out in space. So um, don't think about that. If you had to make a visual of it, I would probably say that it looks something more like this, where everything is right here with us, but you can't pass into that next dimension or that next parallel world without, you know, having the right vibration. So it's not that far. They're actually stacked right beside and on top of each other. This comes up 3D too. So they're stacked on top of each other. So it's not anywhere that we have to go. We just have to change our vibration, change our way of thinking. All right, so let's see what we got now. Similar thing. Um, and something that I noticed in this picture, if you notice, um, what this is, this is the ink, uh, this is a map of the world. Now, um, you know, beyond the ice wall, there are other worlds that we can get to. But like I said, it is in distance, it's separated by the ice wall, but it's vibration. So what I noticed right here, if we look in the very middle where our reality is right here we can see that the currents are going clockwise. They're going clockwise this way. And then on the next realm, or the, that higher realm, they're going counterclockwise. So it's more than just a physical thing and a space thing, because if you think about it, if you were right here and you want to pass over into this other world, you're actually going the opposite way. So that's a crash. So it has to be some way to get past that. That's why I say it's more of a mental thing than an actual physical thing, because there's no way that you would be able to have that current and go into this world with the opposite current. You know what I'm saying? Without being just obliterated. You know what I mean? So what I say is a quantum jump is when we're actually able to jump into one of these realities by our thoughts, by our visualization, by raising our vibration and living that now. Now, the thing is, the universes that you're able to jump to, I mean, you know, I did it several times. We do it hundreds of times a day without even noticing it. Um, they're not big variations. So, you know, I'm probably not going to be able to jump somewhere where the laws of physics and everything is broken down. And I'm like a little flat line, like on flat land, walking around, no 3D stuff. It's not going to be like that. What it's going to be like is more of um, a decision you made. Like, okay, am I going to go to work today? 
you didn't go. But, you know, there's also the possibility that you did go. You don't see that possibility because you're here right now with the choice you made. But it could be possible to switch over to that. All right. So one example that I use, um, I do this a lot for my car keys or if I'm missing something. Um, car keys, I know I put them right there on the table. They're not on the table. I'm looking for them for about 30 minutes. After a few minutes of looking for them, I always just stop looking for them and just sit down and chill for a minute. So I said, all right, I'm going to take a walk. So I walked down the street or to the store and I came back and the keys were right there on the table. <laughs> so we probably go through this phenomenon all the time. So somehow I switched back, but I, after I walked to the store and did my visualization and cleared my mind, I was able to switch back to the reality where I knew where the keys were. So you got to be careful. And yeah, I'm definitely going to have a part two and part three that's going to be more in depth about this because we can actually go forward and backwards. That's why I thought that, um, you know, what you manifest is so important. We can go forward and backwards. So by having a negative mindset, you might regress back into a world that's not as good as this one. You might go somewhere, a reality where you didn't get the job. You see what I'm saying? So you got to be real careful with that. So um, just some quick rules that I would say, um, you know, real quickly, uh, like I said, we'll get into it more later, is uh, you want to get on that right vibration first. So whatever reality that you're trying to do, um, just be aware of when you make decisions and start living now like you would be living in this new reality. So get on that vibration. It's not about space. You don't have to really go anywhere. It's more of a mind vibration. So you travel through your mind. So use that mind power. Use those, uh, you know, whatever you need to do as far as to get into the right vibration and um, go ahead and try to raise your vib vibration. You have to have intention and self-reflection. You got to be able to look at yourself. You got to be able to face the good and the bad because knowing yourself is the only way that you're going to really be able to raise your vibration. I mean, sure, you can do easy stuff like go take a shower and stuff like that. But to really raise it, you want to just try, try to get all the knowledge that you can because it may not seem like it's anything now, but the random stuff that you learned, all that stuff is going towards the big picture. So you don't go through anything that's a bad thing. It's all getting you closer to where you need to be. And like I said, that visualization is important. I mean, if you got to imagine yourself walking through a time or, or you know what I'm saying, whatever you got to do, but get your visualization when you're trying to switch up. So that way you can use that. And once you do it successfully, you're going to be looking for that same feeling that you did successfully when you're trying to do it the next time. So that way it'll give you a kind of gauge and you'll know. You see what I'm saying? And like I was saying about space, um, there's no such thing as outer space. Um, when you think of the Big Bang, don't think of that as outer space. Think of that as like an inner space. It's the darkness because remember, everything comes from the darkness. The darkness creates everything. Everything is just pixel of light that's created from inside the void. So that void is not hundreds of thousands of miles away in outer space. It's within yourself. So think of it that way. And I think that'll help you too. You know what I'm saying? Just have a little bit more control over your intentions. I always know, I say this all the time, that thoughts are things. So we're going to think of them in terms of zeros and ones. You know, think of it's like a computer game and you're creating as you go instead of the earth already being created and you're trying to adjust to the rules of the earth. No, don't do it like that. That's bad backwards. <laughs> All right. So make sure um, that you're thinking about that instead of space and time. You're trying to make a smooth transition. So you're trying to transition to another vibration. You're not actually trying to travel anywhere. It's not a distance thing. Okay. So instead of going somewhere, you actually merge in with a different part of reality. Now, remember, it's not out of space. It's right here. It's within you. It's right here, right now, all the time on this realm. All right. Yeah. So I just want to do a quick video. This is like a preview. I just wanted to test this out and kind of see what people thought. Try to um, see how you all feel about the concept, you know, how far I should go into it if it was understandable. So definitely, y'all, leave me some comments. Let me know, because this is just part one. And I wanted to kind of be like an overview. But my part two and my part three are going to have steps. I mean, we're going to really get into it. 
But I want to check with you all first with this part one, just to make sure everybody understand. Ask your questions. I'm going to go live for this part one. Not sure if it's going to be today, but it might be or it might be tomorrow. And um, we're going to build on this and see if it's something that, uh, you know, that you all are interested um, in exploring with me. All right. So I want to thank you for joining Sound Off. This is your boy, K Paper Chase. Be on the lookout for lots more videos. Hey, and I want to thank everybody for the 1,000 subscribers. It happened on my birthday. <laughs> I always visualize and make stuff happen on, on my birthday, and this was exactly on the same day. So thank you. So, you know, we're growing. Um, definitely share, like, subscribe to the video, subscribe to the channel, you know, support the channel. And uh, thank you all for everything. I'm out. Peace.